Hello, this is Lisa Shea, and these instructions are for making an origami lotus flower. You can make this out of regular origami paper, or out of dollar bills, or any combination. There are eight pieces in the petal part, so in this example the blue part. There are eight pieces to make the blue part, and then there are four pieces which make the green part, which are the leaves. A lotus flower is a water lily type of thing that floats on the top of water. So the green leaves form the base, and then the blue is the actual flower. In this example that I'm about to make for you, I have eight bills, monetary bills, which will be used for the flower part, and then I have four green pieces of origami paper cut into the shape of bills to use for the leaves. You need some string to hold these pieces together, you need some scissors to cut the string, and you need your four pieces of paper or bills for the leaf part, and you need eight pieces of paper or bills for the flower part. So it's completely up to you how you use things. You can use dollar bills for a small present, or if you're giving your son his very first rent payment, then this is a nice way to make it pretty for him. So fold one of the petal parts in half, lengthwise, and then we're going to fold the four corners in to that center line we just made. We're going to be doing this all eight times in a row, one for each of the different petal parts. So you'll be seeing the exact same thing a couple times in a row, but I won't show it all eight times because that would be too long for the video to fit. So you'll be doing the same thing eight times in a row and I'll show you a couple times how it works. So once you get the four corner pieces in, you're going to fold the top length piece into that center line. And then you'll fold the bottom long piece into the center line. And again, if you don't want to use money, you can certainly use paper. You can use whatever you want to. So that's really it. That makes the petal number one. And we're going to be doing this eight times in a row. You fold it in half lengthwise for the final step. So that's one. Now we'll do item number two. So again, fold it in half lengthwise. Fold the four corners in to that center line. One, two, three, four. I'm going to fold the length in from the top, fold the length in from the bottom, and then give it a fold in half. So we're going to do this eight times in a row with the eight pieces which are going to be forming the flower part. So you can see how that works. So now all eight are done. Now we're going to do the petals, which in this case are green. So it's the pretty much the same thing. You fold it in half. You fold in the four corners. I apologize that I'm going a little quick, but again I'm trying to make this fit and hopefully you can hit pause and rewind to get it to catch up with you. Fold the top and the bottom in. So it's exactly the same as we were doing for the petals, and that's it. We give it a little fold to give it a crease, but now that side is set. So I'll show you again, and again this is for the green leaf part at the bottom of the water, billy, water lily. So you fold in the four corners. This gives it a little bit of a shape. Fold in the top. Fold in the bottom. And then just give it a little crease. So you're all set. So I'll show you a little bit of the next one. But again, it's pretty much the exact same as we did for the previous petals. And now we're just doing four of them for the bottom area leaves. And then number four. This one's going to get cut short a little bit so that we can move on to the next part and get it to fit. But I think you see the general idea here. All right, so now we've got a bottom leaf. We put on one top petal. You see that it fits into the groove there. And then a second top petal goes over the outside of the first top petal. So they're going to spring a little, 
you'll have to sort of hold them into place once we get to the assembly part. But you start with a leaf with all the green on the outside, a top petal that folds over the top, and a second top petal that folds over the top fully of the first top petal. So again, we take a green leaf, put it inside the groove of the top petal, and then a second top petal goes all the way on the full outside of the previous one. We're going to do this a fourth time. So the green leaf goes on the bottom, top petal goes on the outside, and then the second top petal goes completely around the outside of the first one. So now we're going to put all of these side by side. Yes, they spring out a little so you have to hold them tight, but you just stack them one on top of another with all of the green leaves at the bottom because they go on the bottom of the flower. So these all go side by side with the green at the bottom of each of these things. Get it to squash in properly. So now you can see all four of them are side by side with the green on the bottom of each layer. There's the green at the bottom, there's the petals on the top. And now what we're going to do is we're going to tie these all together. And this can be a little tricky. It might help if you have a friend to come and give you a hand. It took me a couple tries here to get this to tie properly, so I trimmed this down a little bit for the tying process. But as you can see, usually I'd use my teeth. <laughs> So here's a short inversion. All you did is tie it together tightly in the middle there and give it a couple extra knots to make sure it stays in place. So there's the green bottoms of the petal side and there's the tops of the petals. So now we're going to start creating the flower. We're going to fold up the top layer of the flower and then fold up the second layer of the flower a little less far. And we're going to go around in a circle and do this to all eight layers. So we're going to stop with the top layer and fold it up fairly high. And then the second layer we're going to fold up just a little bit to make the outer layer of the flower. And work your way around and get the top layer to lift up high. And then the second layer lifts up a little less. Water lilies start by growing deep down in the bottom of a pond and they send up shoots and then eventually the shoot reaches the surface and it creates a flower up on the top of the surface. So for many religions, a water lily represents a awakening, a spiritual awakening and a growth because your life is spent growing through that murky pond and not really seeing everything around you and then suddenly you get to the surface and you flower and you become beautiful and you realize your purpose in life. So for that reason, lotuses are representative of life changes and spiritual awakening and are often used in marriage ceremonies and new baby ceremonies and other similar kinds of life changes. And they are of course beautiful flowers just in general. So these are often used as centerpieces at weddings. And there's presents for people who have just gotten married or presents for people who are getting their first apartment, getting their first house. So here we have the petals of the flower. We'll squash down the leaves a little bit so it looks more like an actual lotus type of leaf sitting on top of the water surface supporting its flower. So we've got all of the leaves made out flat and now we pull up the petals just to give them that little center flower base. And you can see how there's the outer ring of looser petals and then the inner ring of more raised, tightly knit petals. And you can make these as high or low as you want. And again, because it's all done with paper, you can use pink colors or red colors or blue colors, whatever color meets your theme that you want to have. You could change them with the seasons. And there you go. So you've got a pretty lotus flower. And we've got one made with money. And we've got one over here. I can get my hands on it. It's made with origami paper. Visit lisashay.com for any questions at all. I'm happy to answer questions for you. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. <laughs>